السلام علیکم گائز کیسے ہیں آپ امید کرتے ہیں آپ سب کیریئر سے ہوں گے خوش ہوں گے اور ہماری دعا ہے کہ آپ ہمیشہ خوش رہیں ہستے اور مسکراتے رہیں میرا نام ہے رحمان انور اور میں ہوں محمد اور میں ہوں علی اور میں ہوں ظفر اقبال اور بھائی آج ہم جس ویڈیو پر کرنے جا رہے ہیں اس ویڈیو کا ٹائٹل ہے وائی انڈیا از بیٹر دین چائنا تو دیکھتے ہیں ویڈیو اگر ویڈیو پسند آئے تو ویڈیو کو لائک چینل کو سبسکرائب ضرور کیجیے گا کرتے ویڈیو اسٹارٹ اور دیکھتے ہیں لمی آسک یو کوشچن اف آئی سی دا ورڈ انڈیا واٹ پپس ان ٹو یور مائنڈ And if I say the word China, what pops into your mind? I can almost guarantee you that whatever popped into your mind for both countries is complete bullshit. Now, I'm not here to show you beautiful countrysides and flashy cities of India and China and try and compare them and tell you which country is better and more advanced or which country you should choose as your next tourist destination. No, no, no. Nothing like that. You see, I'm a realist. I grew up in Africa, and so I know what it's like to grow up and live in the developing third world, which China and India are. No matter what flashy buildings and skyscrapers and soft power and nonsense you get from both countries, at the end of the day, this footage that I took myself that you can see side by side of both India when I visited and China, you can tell it's still developing. And there's no shame in being a developing country. I come from one myself. The thing is, in our lifetimes, we've seen both countries experience massive change, massive growth, but in different directions. And this is something I wanted to talk about in this video. You see, if we go back to my original question, what do you think of India? If you hear the word India, and what do you think of when you hear the word China? The image that you have in your mind about India is probably far closer to the truth than the one you would have about China. And I'll explain why. India doesn't hide. India is honest, and by honest I mean the problems that India has are first of all reported on, put into the international news. They're put into movies. I mean, we've got movies like Slumdog Millionaire and who, who knows how many Bollywood movies about the poverty and the slums and the, the challenges that India faces when it comes to its massive population and the poverty. In China, we see no such thing. Bad news is suppressed is not allowed to go into the outside world, and if it does, excuses are made for it. We don't see the problems that China faces in their own movies and media. And of course, India is a big participant in the global community, especially on the internet. Remember, the internet isn't censored or blocked in India. So, when's the last time you looked up a tech tutorial and there was an Indian guy telling you exactly how to format your hard drive or something like that? Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a partition on your Windows 10 operating system on your hard drives. There's participation there on all Western platforms. There's dialogue there and there's nothing to hide. And as such, we get a very clear picture of what's happening inside of India. And that's why, I don't know about you guys, but my idea of what India was like was almost exactly how it was when I went to visit. I always pictured India as being a very vibrant and colorful place, but also a very dirty place with a lot of poverty and a lot of problems that need to be addressed. Like this family living on the street where this young girl would look after her two brothers while her parents worked at a nearby construction site. I saw all of that. I also saw the religion and the history and the culture which I expected to see. It was there. The temples were there. The colorful religious clothing and the traditions were all present exactly as I expected. Whereas the opposite was true when I went to China. I was expecting Kung Fu, temples, monks, dragons, that kind of thing, but found nothing of the sort. Because unfortunately, China's deep cultural history had been erased by Mao Zedong and his great leap backwards and the cultural devolution. I also was not expecting to see as much poverty, homelessness and issues that I saw with my own eyes when I went to China, simply because that kind of news never left the borders of China and it's not talked about. So what I'm trying to say here is that India is more honest about itself as a country. Yes, it faces a lot of issues. So does China. So does America. So does everywhere else. The difference being that China actively hides and suppresses its problems, and it wants the international community to think that it's the big kid on the block who has no problems, is all-powerful, it can do whatever it wants. And its image in the international community is very curated and very specific. India, on the other hand, is what it is, completely unashamedly and out there for the world to see. 
So why has China been so much more successful in growing its economy than India? Given that both countries have similar demographics and have had a similar opportunity when it comes to engaging with the rest of the world, well, it's quite simple. India is a democracy. China is not. What the Chinese government says, it does. And there's nobody to stop them. If they decide they're going to steamroll your village and put up a, a new factory, there's nothing you can do about it. If they decide they're not going to follow environmental laws and take shortcuts, there's nothing anyone can do about it. If they decide that they're going to make up fake GDP numbers, there's no one, no checks and balances and no one to stop them from doing so. If a nearby village is poisoned by a chemical factory, the local government can cover it up. They have complete control over the press. They have complete control over the people. The average person in China has no say over what their government does. So when they come in to do something or they tell you they're going to do something, like for instance, lock up an entire city and turn it into a prison, you have no say. The difference with India being a democracy is that the people do have a say. When the government says that it's going to do something, the people can veto what the government says. The people can rise up and stop the government from doing something that negatively affects them en masse. The housing bubble in China is another example of this. It's a house of cards. A third of the economy is built upon this complete clown show where people are buying a concrete box in the sky for an exorbitant amount of money and relying on the next fool that comes along to buy that worthless apartment from them, which nobody's living in, by the way. It really does have no value. They're expecting the next person to buy it for more. And then the next fool that comes along, he buys it for a lot of money, expecting that the next fool will buy it for more. It's an outlandish bubble that should have burst ages ago, but the government has complete control over the news, so negative news doesn't come out about the housing prices or the housing crisis. The government can also just print out any numbers at once when it comes to reports on how the housing market's doing, how the GDP is going, and with no checks and balances, they get away with it and have been getting away with it for a very long time. So again, the image of China's economy being so powerful and so great is also not correct. The numbers aren't true. And even the Communist Party itself admits that the GDP numbers are falsified. I used to film a lot in China, I'm sure you know from my videos, and I was often met with suspicion. I was often met with scowls. I was met with, well, people calling the cops on me or the security on me. Whereas I found when I was filming in India, people would wave at me, would smile, and would invite me to take pictures and videos of them. I got to see the first tier cities of India, Yes, they're impressive and they're wonderful, just like the first tier cities in China are impressive and wonderful. But I also got to see the rural side of India, just as I've seen the rural side of China. And while I found hospitality and friendship in both areas, I found in China that there was a lot more initial suspicion and worry that I was some kind of a spy or an agent or something like that, or I was there to somehow catch them out doing something bad. Whereas in India, I didn't get that at all. Another thing that I noticed, which is very obvious, is the lack of religion in China really does seem to impact people's lives. The freedom of religion in India seems to give people more purpose and substance to their lives. And I'm being completely honest when I say that, just from my own personal observations. When religion and tradition have been beaten out of you like it has in China, Life tends to be fairly hollow. There are very few things for you to focus on. Obviously, you focus on surviving, you focus on making money, you can focus on hobbies and so on and so forth. But in India, I could see how fulfilling all the different religions were to people. Just how much faith there is in all the different deities and the way things operate there is very different. And that's something that makes India very interesting, is the culture, the tangible culture that's there, which is completely missing from China. I hope you noticed that I didn't focus on the bad parts of India or the bad parts of China when it comes to society. There are some pretty terrible things that happen in both countries. No, no, no. The purpose of this video is I would like China to take a page out of India's book. If China decided to open up, first of all, allow internet freedom, allow its own citizens to have a proper discussion on the international stage, to actually participate in the world, rather than be cut off and censored, it would vastly help improve the image people have of China. It would make China more relatable. It would open it up. If China was more honest about the problems that it faces, there would be more sympathy. and There would be more help from the rest of the world. 
Because if you pretend that you're number one and you pretend that you have everything and you pretend you're the strongest and the biggest bully on the block, people will not have any sympathy for you and are far less likely to take you seriously or want to help you when you desperately need it. Now, I'd like to just say a couple of things off the cuff here. Um, India is a wonderful place. The people there were incredibly friendly to me. Um, I've never experienced that level of open friendliness in society anywhere else in the world that I've been. And I just remember standing with my camera, taking some photos or some B-roll of the streets around me or what was going on, and the people running up to me, smiling and asking me to take a photo and uh, were curious as to who I was and what I was doing there. I experienced a lot of positive and positivity and hospitality in China too. And I absolutely love traveling around China and I had some incredible experiences and some very friendly and lovely experiences. But the level of suspicion um, I would get as a foreigner with a camera in China, which is understandable given what the Chinese Communist Party, the rhetoric they have about, you know, foreign spies coming in and foreign forces coming in to meddle with China's internal affairs. I mean, you understand why people are that way. But it's very off-putting and it's very... It's tragic, really, because I do feel that as human beings around the world, we all share very similar experiences and we all can relate to one another and we should all try to get along rather than constantly trying to blame the neighbor over there for the problems that we face in our own backyard. But at the end of the day, remember, the people of China are forced to serve the government and the government... They don't really care as long as the people fall in line and are useful to them. Whereas in India, the government has to serve the people because they're elected by the people. And the people do have a say. And this makes a world of difference. Anyway, until next time, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome. का एक्सपीरियंस तो ठीक रहा चाइना का और इंडिया का लेकिन सबसे ज़्यादा जो चीज़ उनको अच्छी लगी वो इंडिया की है कि जो यहाँ के लोग हैं वो भाई इनको एक अच्छा वेलकम किया गया और सबसे जो चाइना की एक ऐसी चीज़ है कि ना वो जो उन्होंने भाई अपना मीडिया कंट्रोल किया हुआ है सबसे ज़्यादा इस तरह से भाई को प्रॉब्लम आई है जिसकी वजह से उस उन्होंने भाई एक घबरा कर वीडियो भी बनाई है आप देख लें कि इंडिया एक कैसी कंट्री है डेमोक्रेसी है हर तरह की चीज़ें हैं बहुत प्यारी एक्टिविटी हाँ और उन्होंने बोला कि एक जस्ट एक विंडो करनी थी तो मैंने सर्च किया वीडियोज़ आई इंडियंस की इतनी ढेर सारी भर भर की इस चीज़ पर तो काफ़ी चीज़ें हमें इंडिया से देखने को मिलती है लेकिन ऐसी न्यूज़ हमें कोई चाइना से नहीं देखने को मिलती जैसे उन्होंने कंट्रोल किया हुआ है सबसे ज़्यादा मकसद उनका यही चीज़ें दिखाना थी जो मेन उन्होंने भाई दिखाया नहीं सही बात है अब देखो ना एक चाइना और इंडिया में काफ़ी एक ट्रैवलिंग होती है फॉरनर की तो फिर वो के एक कंपेरिजन करते हैं कि यार ये हमें चीज़ें मिली है कि ये इस कंट्री में मिली ये इस कंट्री में मिली लेकिन जो फॉरनर को चीज़ मिलती है ना एक इंडिया में एक फ्रेंडली चीज़ है वो सबसे एक बेस्ट होती है क्योंकि इधर के लोग एक घुल मिल जाते हैं और एक मतलब कि आपको एक तरीके से आपकी हेल्प करेंगे एक आपके एक साथ आपको एक मतलब के एक एक अच्छा राह दिखाएंगे ये नहीं कि एक मतलब के दूसरी एक एक अजीब से तरीके से डील करना वो ऐसा नहीं होता लेकिन चाइना में एक लोग आप हमने कई वीडियो देखी है लोग वो अपनी एक धुन में रहते हैं ना किसी को बुलाते हैं ना मतलब के किसी से एक अटैच होते हैं तो वो इतना एक मतलब के फ्रेंडली माहौल नहीं होता नहीं बिल्कुल ऐसे ही है लेकिन सबसे बड़ा जो हुआ उनका इकोनॉमिकली उन्होंने कहा ना कि वो मतलब हर चीज़ कंट्रोल्ड की वजह से बहुत सारे फिगर्स ऐसे हैं कि जो हमें मतलब बहुत बड़े नज़र आते या बहुत सारी ऐसी चीज़ें हैं लेकिन ये कि वो हकीकत में अभी तक जो है ना वो ये कह लेके नहीं है उसमें क्योंकि उनके हाथ में गवर्नमेंट के हाथ में हर चीज़ जो है ना वो अपने हिसाब से डिसाइड करते हैं बाकी ये कि सबसे बड़ा पॉइंट यही है कि वहाँ पे भाई इंडिया के अंदर एक जमहूरियत है जमहूरियत का मतलब यही है कि आप हर तरह से आज़ाद हैं वहाँ के लोग जो है ना वो मतलब फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच है फ्रीडम ऑफ हर तरह की जो है ना उनको आज़ादी है और हर बंदा जो है ना वो अपना खुद मुख्तार है वहाँ पे लेकिन चाइना में बहुत सारी चीज़ों का भी वो खुल के नई चीज़ें जिस तरह गवर्नमेंट लेकिन ये कि उनको 
انہوں نے ایک اچھے طریقے سے یہی بیان کیا اور ان کو جو بہت زیادہ ڈفرنس ادھر سب سے بڑا ریلیجن حوالے سے جو ایک فارنر کی سوچ ہوتی ہے نا ایک میڈیا کے ریلیٹڈ تو وہ ایک مطلب کہ ایک فارنر کی آپ یہ نہیں کہ سوچ کے وہ ایک میڈیا کے اٹیچ میں رہتے ہیں وہ ادھر پریکٹیکل بھی کرنے آتے ہیں اور دیکھتے ہیں کہ یار واقعی چیزیں آتے ہیں لیکن جب بھی انڈیا میں آتے ہیں تو ہر چیز ایک چینج ہو جاتی گن گاتے جاتے ہیں بھائی انڈیا کے تو اچھی ویڈیو تھی امید کرتے ہیں آپ کو ویڈیو پسند آئے گی اگر پسند آئے تو ویڈیو کو لائک چینل کو سبسکرائب ضرور کیجیے گا ملتے ہیں نیکسٹ ویڈیو کے ساتھ تب تک کے لیے اللہ حافظ